I don't even know why I do this sometimes. <laughs> What's going on guys? Three was on a block back again. Today we have an Infinity M35 or Q35, something 35. I'm not an Infinity guy. But client brought this by because the seat is broken said it was making a clicking sound so we're gonna take a look and see what's going on all right like I mentioned the client said the vehicle was making a clicking sound um, and the seat was clicking that sounds like a click and that seat is moving all over the place. Let's take a look back here. Let's see. Oh yeah, definitely have something broken on that side and that side. All right, well, We'll pull the seat out and see what has happened. Something has definitely gone awry. Pop these plastic covers off. Get the bolts out at the front. I'm sure it's the same at the back. We'll unbolt it. Unplug it because these seats have uh, airbags in them. A little side airbag there. So make sure we get everything properly discharge maybe disconnect the battery after we get the seat unbolted just so we don't have an accidental discharge of that airbag all right we're going to use a flat blade or you can use a plastic pry tool prop these plastic things here and you'll need a 14 millimeter either wrench or a socket to get the bolts out The pry points are right at the front. If you see that little window right there, one directly across from that, so you can get underneath there and pop that loose or up, oh, we'll slide right up out of there. If you hadn't seen my video on this chemo impact, I highly recommend it. If you don't have one, I also highly recommend it. These things are awesome. All right, two front bolts are out. Let's move to the back. So this piece here just unclips on the bottom of the seat. I just had that out of the way to do an inspection. We'll lift your floor mat up out of the way. Now we're going to tilt the seat up so we can unplug the electrical connectors underneath. I'm going to tilt the seat back. You can tilt the seat forward. It's really up to you. This way the weight of the seat is kind of holding it back in position for you. So we'll ease it back until it rests in some sort of comfortable place. And will allow us to access the electrical connectors right here under the front of the seat. Now judging by these blue zip ties down here, I would say somebody's been here before. I'm sure Scott from VCore would appreciate that. So that popping sound that the owner was hearing is this plastic popping, and that's because the seat's moving on the seat bracket. I recommend you go ahead and fold the seat forward. So with it folded up, it'll be easier to get out of the car. I'll show you that when I go to remove it. see our electrical connections up here at the top one here one there and then there's an airbag connection I highly recommend you disconnect the battery before you tamper it with any SRS airbag sensor so let's go ahead and do that underneath your driver's side footwell see a latch here for the hood lovely you know it's nothing like popping the hood on a car and there's nothing you can see because everything's covered in plastic. Go back here to the left hand side and you will see a cover that says battery. We'll pop that lever and that lever and remove that and we'll disconnect the battery cable. There she 
is. <clears throat> it's like somebody's holding the positive terminal down there with a uh, piece of duct tape over the terminal cover because it's actually broken. Yeah, see that there. Guess that's one way to do it. There's really no shock damage in there. Um, this is all plastic. I guess they just put that on there because it broke and they didn't want to leave it off. Of course, you're going to need your 10 millimeter. So go ahead and take your hour before you watch this video or pause it now and go find your 10 millimeter. Now you see, I'm loosening the battery hold down. My reason for that is I'm going to see if I can slide this battery over just a little bit. Probably not. Of course, not. It won't move. These wires are tucked really, really tight up in there, and I actually cannot get them off. So I'm trying to create a little bit of space. In the meantime, I'm go ahead and disconnect the negative side. But you don't have to disconnect both. We'll just say this is insurance. Dropping the negative side off will discharge the chassis. So if I do bump the chassis with the positive side, no harm, no foul. slide that piece of plastic in there that'll hold that in position so we don't have any accidental surprises back inside go ahead and disconnect these electrical connectors we'll need to clip these zip ties that are holding this wire loom to the bottom of the seat um, the factory ones have been clipped when this was repaired before it looks like or they had the seat out for some reason so we'll need to go back and clip those and disconnect all these connectors I told you guys I would show you the position to have the seat in to get it out. So you'll want the seat all the way leaning forward like that. This allows you to slide it out pretty easily and you don't have to fight as if it was leaning back. So lean it forward. You don't have to worry about sliding it forward because you can lift it up out of the tracks and move it forward and get up out of the door. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing moved inside and then we'll take a look underneath. All right, got the seat inside, went ahead and broke down the plastic, got this off here so you guys can see what's going on internally. So this side is good. I'm gonna come over here to this side, and this is where the fun begins. Look at that. I'm not the world's best welder by any means, but that, and the piece is down here, it's broken. It's right down there. So, I'm all bolt, oven bolt. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and unbolt this actuator here, and we'll get in there. Pull it back to where it needs to be at, clean all this up. i got to get this out of the way, get some more stuff off the seat. And whoever did this did not protect the leather. If you look there, the leather's all burnt back here on the back side. So plastic here is melted. This should have been removed. Yeah, definitely not the way. Not the way to fix the seat. All right, let's see if we can make this right. All right, got the plastic cover removed there. And if we look down in here, this is the rod here. And the bracket is way down in there, so I can pull it out some. And that's the bracket that's supposed to be attached to the rod. You can see where it was previously welded. Anyway, I am going to unbolt this actuator the screw actuator here so i can rotate this leg back at where it needs to be at and then protect the seat because they didn't protect any of the seat here you can see there's some burn marks on the plastic um burn marks on the leather yeah so protect all things that need to be protected i'm gonna grind this down grind that down and then grind down all the stuff they have on there and rotate this thing around as far as I can get it up to get a good contact for the location of the new weld weld this thing back together and it'll be good to go
Now, since this is a screw type actuator, we shouldn't have to worry about any tension that like bounces it around, jumps out of my hand. But always be prepared just in case. Like so. You want to see some carnage? Let me show you this. All right, as you can see, I went ahead and unbolted the entire lower assembly of the seat. The reason I did that was because that gives me more flexibility up top. So with the lower portion of the seat unbolted, I've got a lot more flexibility up here, which allows me to get better clearance in here to get to my welding area. So you probably could just unbolt the bottom ones, but I did the top and the bottom. So if I do need to slide this around in there, I can. Also gives me some space to get this out of the way or protected which it's already pretty messed up, so I don't know that there's anything worse I could do to it. <laughs> but, now this bar, i move around a little bit, and um, mainly I'm just trying to get in here to clean up this area that needs to be re-welded, clean this up here, clean this up, all that up there. And if we get a good weld on it, it definitely should not come apart again. But... This is the only weld they did here. And then you see the welds back here. This was all on top of the old welding. Yeah, it's just not going to work. And they didn't get enough heat to even penetrate into the old weld. So it helped for a little bit, apparently. But definitely not for the long term. Alright, you see I got all the sensitive components protected there. Got the foam protected up on that side. Just took the welding blanket, tucked it around there. I'll take care of covering up that plastic piece when it comes time to weld. I'm going to go ahead and start working on cleaning up these old welds. For this, I'll be using a two-entry finishing tool. This is small enough to get down in the area of focus. So we'll use that to get all this area cleaned up as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and take this plastic piece off. I don't think it'll get damaged, but better to be safe. So I'm going to pull this out of the way. in there I'm gonna come around to this side where I've got it clamped in I'm gonna redo that weld that's right there and then wrap around where those pliers are at
let this weld cool down. I'll brush it off. Have a little bit of paint on there just to protect the areas that. There's a little bit of flux. I'll go ahead and let this weld cool off. And I'll get my welding blanket and stuff up out of there. And she should be good to go. I'll go ahead and bolt it up after I we'll let this weld cool off. We'll go ahead and reassemble the seat, dust it out in the car. All right. You can see here. She's re-welded. There's just some pores down there. That's where it was broken the first time. I welded the back of this together. Welded it down in the seam where it broke and then did a bridge across there so that keeps it from twisting, which is probably why it broke in the first place. The original break, I'm sure. That one looks good. <laughs> Um, I'm assuming it's been repaired before because there's a Sharpie mark across there, so it's really interesting. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish reassembling this thing and we'll put it back in the vehicle. Alright, she is back reinstalled. And we have no more bouncing around. So I'm yanking on the seat here. Now moving up front. Moves like she's supposed to. No more clicking, clunking, or clacking. So the owner will be satisfied. They'll be here to pick us up soon. Got the sun set in my face. So that's going to wrap up the video on this Infinity MX-5 seat repair. Wasn't too bad. Just pulled the seat out. Cleaned up the old weld where it had been fixed before. Putting a new weld on there. Got it looking fantastic. Added a little gusset across there just to make sure we don't have any flex in the future. So this problem doesn't come back and repeat itself. Oh yeah. If you guys are interested in some three wheels in a block merch, let me know down in the comment section below. My name's Erwin, this is Thrills on a Block, where we're giving back, the time is taken away. We'll see you soon.